So, <clears throat> you know what one monster mo monster has gotten the least amount of love in cinema? It's not werewolves, certainly not vampires or zombies. No, the one monster I think above all others who, have, who has gotten the least amount of love in horror cinema is the mummy. Because when you think about it, you can, you can name a good amount of vampire movies, or a good amount of werewolf movies, or a good amount of zombie movies. Can you really name a huge amount, or at least a good amount, of mummy movies? Because really, you can just it, count three right off the bat. Karloff's mummy, uh, Christopher Lee's mummy, and finally, the mummy with Arnold Vosloo and, and Brendan Fraser. That's... It's literally it. Three and a half if you want to if you want to count the uh, segment in Tales from the Dark Side movie uh, with the mu with a mummy in it. So really, if you want to go all out, three and a half stories out of the mountains, mountains of mummy films. There have been not a lot of good ones, and I thought it would be kind of fun to do a bit of a pitch for a for like what I would do. As a mu a story about the mu about a mummy, not specifically like Emotep or whatever, but like a horror film of the mummy, like of an, an Egyptian horror film based around a mummy. So let's talk. Uh, so let's talk about that. Let's discuss that. Uh, let's discuss this li uh, this little game. So a mummy film, I think usually talks about, like, a curse or, like, some great evil that will befall the raiders of the tomb, but they never really go into it. It's usually the mummy gets up and kills people. That's usually what it is, and I think that's the big problem with mummy films, and I think the one who understood it best, um, as a, um, you can't really take a guy seriously wrapped in bandages shambling towards you though that uh, though the hammer film does show that that can be scary um to an extent but the the Karloff mummy film doesn't really have him in the full makeup except for one major scene that's really it and usually he's this just um tall gaunt figure but I would really like to play more with the magic um, that Egyptian lore has. I would really like to play with the Egyptian lore of of what a mummy is. Like, for instance, I would like to have a story where a tomb is disturbed. As always, a tomb is disturbed, and it's a unnamed, like a like a really bad, like a pharaoh that the history wants to forget. Like this dude did some ungodly shit. Like, even the gods were like, what the hell, dude, and pun and personally punished him, so that, much like in in most of the mummy stories, like, he found no rest in, de in the afterlife as well. And the curse would be that what it would be is that it would, um, those who disturb this slum, uh, this, this mummy would be basically, uh, just damned in both this life and the next. Very much, you know, damned in this life. And they, uh, like, I would really like to play up, because no one ever does, like, a psychological horror film with the mummy. And I think a mummy could be, like, really cool as, like, a psychological horror film. Because, really, like, the a curse could be, it could you could, like, try to science it away. Like, you could try to say, like, oh, like, oh, this just happened because that happened, that happened, and that happened. And then you could really play with, does it, though? That's way too convenient for all those little things to really play with it. Like, you could have the death scenes kind of like Final Destination, where little things come apart, and then big kill comes and just wipes out a dude, or something of that nature. Like, it starts small, um... Like, maybe, <clears throat> like, an accident on, like, a boat trip or something, or a, um, or, like, they come down with a, vi like, West Nile virus or something, and it's just, like, little things that you can explain, but as, as the film goes on, and the deeper you go into the lore of the mummy, and the, and the, 
like, the longer it progresses and the more victims that the uh, curse takes, the more it starts to become more supernatural. But at the same time, it's very much like, okay, there's no way, it, like, there's there's got to be a scientific explanation. Like, you can try to explain how this happened or that happened or explain that, you you know, this only happened because that happened. Um, and you can even have that... Um, there was also a... I would like to put in a little pseudoscience because there was a bit of a, of a scare for a while, and I don't know if there's any validity to this, and I don't think there is, but I'd like to play with this, is that basically there was a little bit of scare that the there were toxins like uh like mold or stuff in there in these tombs that would make people hallucinate so i would like to play with that angle of having this tomb be filled with like mold or some kind of like one of the traps it is to keep uh to keep people out one of the traps to keep the people out is like some kind of hallucinogenic like powder that gets disturbed like when you try to open the tomb or try to like touch one of or like try to put or put your hands on like the walls to read the the inscriptions like you're getting that toxin on your hands um yeah i would like to play with that like and i'm not saying like oh you're just gonna science away all the scary shit no i just want to have it like at first like play with the idea of there's got to be like a scientific explanation because very much like the king tut's tomb um, several people did die, um, but there was no curse on the temple. I should I should state, and I think a lot of uh, of you guys know by now that there was no curse on King Tut's tomb. It was a just a bunch of you know happenstance that happened to the pe those people who died, and b someone just, some idiot just misread the tomb. Like that was the main thing is that some idiot just misread the uh, entrance to the tomb, and. That was really it. But I would like to play with that, like, oh, um, is it stuff we can just be signed? But no, as the movie progresses, it would be like, no, there is a fucking curse. And I would really like, to, I would have a mummy in here. Like, I would have a walking mummy. And that he's freed. Now that this, this evil dude is now free, he is now going to bring about, like, uh, just evil on the land. Like, he has been disturbed, and now he's going to bring about just this ungodly amount of evil onto the world. Like, that is his whole plan, is that he is just going to give nothing but absolute hell down upon, uh, the you know, onto the people around him. Um, the other thing I would really like to play with is, like, the mythology of the, go of the Egyptian gods, because... A lot of them are benevolent, but if you piss them off, they're they're anything but benevolent. Because yeah, the Egyptian gods for the most part were were chill gods. It wasn't like with the Greek gods or the Norse god. Uh, well, the Norse gods were pretty chill too, but like the Egyptian gods were like pretty chill themselves until you pissed them off, and then they were oof, they they were not kind. So I would have it that the Egyptian gods are would definitely play like another aspect here is that the Egyptian gods are cursing these people the this group of people who have disturbed this one mummy they did not want awoke and now like they are personally dragging them to the under the gods are like bringing them to the underworld to torture and maim them for all eternity in in death as well as life so, yeah. Admittedly, like, this was one thing that, like, apparently Clive Barker wanted to do with his Mummy movie, because for those who don't know, Clive Barker was going to do a Mummy movie back in the early 90s until that got scrapped, and then it, be, it went on to be... The, net, the Mummy film went on to Scott Somers, who, be, who would make the uh, Brendan Fraser Mummy films. Um... So yeah, I'd really like to play with, again, like, just more of a psychological aspect to the mummy and everything else. Because again, like, I think there's so much potential for a good mummy horror film, but really we've only had three, three films. We've really had only three good movies out of the mountain of crap that, it, it, the, and it's a tiny mountain too, it's a tiny mountain of crap uh, for mummy films. 
It's not a big hill, and when you do see a mummy film, it's usually not good unless it's got Karloff, Fra Brendan Fraser, or uh, Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing in it. Those are the only three um, as good mummy films. Or maybe I'm just missing one. Maybe you guys have seen that one that you really enjoyed and should uh, just let me know in the comments below if I'm forgetting a good mummy movie. As far as I know, there's only been three good ones out of the tiny... Because, again, I feel like The Mummy, out of every other monster, that's the one that's been getting the least amount of attention and not good attention. Not only that, like, The Windigo is getting more... Uh, there's going to be... there's I'm seeing a, a sudden a increase of Windigo films than I am... And not to say that that's bad. I really dig The Windigo as a creature. But, like... There's more. There's going to be more Windigo movies soon than there are Mummy movies. Anyway, so yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this. Uh, just comment below, let me know what you guys think, and I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the multiverse.